Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a couple of lovebirds that love the MCU <laughs> so much that we went ahead and ranked our 100 favorite characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Basically, uh, with these characters, as with all of our favorite characters, we didn't do any sort of rigid guidelines as to what determined their ranking on this list. It mm -hmm. was a gut reaction. So it was... Ken's gut reaction to them and my gut reaction to them. And then we took their scores on our list and averaged them out to create our definitive list. Yes, yes. It's a, it, we, we compromise, as all married couples do in a healthy relationship. <laughs> exactly. And so, she won most of those compromises as all healthy married... <laughs> it's true. I'm not even going to try to lie about it. That's totally true. All right. So without further ado, here is our top 10 favorite characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So starting off our top 10 list is number 10, Yondu. Yondu comes to us from the Guardians of the Galaxy branch of the MCU. And uh, he's basically Star-Lord's adoptive father, Yeah, basically. Um, he is a crooked guy. He <laughs> is a shady guy. He hangs out with a very bad crowd. Mm. He's a bit violent. There are a lot of qualities about him that maybe are making you wonder how the heck he ever got in our top 10. Uh, if you haven't watched all the MC movies, you're going to be really surprised. But if you've watched the later ones, you know what uh, what a profound impact he has on Star-Lord and a profound impact that he had on the audience. I know for me personally, when he died, I was sobbing like a child. I'm, I'm not even, I can't even sugarcoat that. It was total ugly crying. I had a box of Kleenex next to me. I don't know how many I went through. It was It was gross, ugly crying, but... I just was so moved by him and his redemption story and his connection with Star-Lord that to then have that stripped from me as an audience member and not be able to see that anymore or their dynamic and how it's going to progress, I was just devastated. He also develops a relationship with Rocket in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, kind of, you know, their stories that mirror each other. Yandu is someone that... I, I love the Yaka Arrow. It's just super badass. And the scene in the rap with in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 when he's destroying all the mutineers, the Ravagers, with the Yaka Arrow, and the tunes are, are, are blasting. It's it's great. It's it's one of my favorite scenes. And Yandu is a character that, uh, you know, we like we like our characters a little bit flawed. Yeah. And Yandu is definitely that. And so, like, because then they have a chance to grow, and they, and they feel more real. Number nine on our list, we're sticking with the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's Baby Groot. Baby Groot, you, you don't really need a reason why, you just need to see how cute Baby Groot is. Uh, watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 if you have not, because Baby Groot is adorable, hilarious, and a uh, fierce little guy. Uh, got a lot of spunk and energy. Now, Baby Groot almost maybe might be our favorite character if it wasn't for Teenage Groot, because he grows up to be Teenage Groot, and he's a little bit less cute. And he gets of... some sap, and then he's a real dude. Yeah, exactly. I think for me with Baby Groot, one of the things that puts him in my personal top 10 was the fact that if I'm ever having a really bad day, if I'm sad or angry or depressed about the state of the world or whatever the case may be, I can go and YouTube search Baby Groot, and just about <laughs> any video that comes up is going to make me smile, or laugh or put me in an instantly better mood. I mean, he's a character that you can lift out of the MCU and just see footage of him and be instantly happy. Next up is number eight, and this is our favorite villain, <laughs> Hela. She is a villain through and through. She is unapologetically a villain. Yeah. She wants power, she wants to rule, she wants to kill her enemies, and she doesn't care who gets in her way. My father is dead. As are the princes. You're welcome. The way that Kate Blanchett plays her is sleek and sexy and smart and conniving and funny. Every great king had an executioner. Not just to execute people, but also to execute their vision. But mainly to execute people. Still, it was a great honor. There's just something so delicious yeah. about her portrayal. I think this is why Hela had to be in our top 10 because we had to acknowledge the fact that there are just some remarkable villains that we get the pleasure of watching on, on an MCU screen, and this is one of them. Number seven is Scott Lang, Ant-Man. What, you haven't heard of me? No, you wouldn't have heard of me. Scott Lang is on this list uh, for his humor, for his heart. He is, uh, you know, he loves his daughter more than anything and is willing to do anything for her. You know, he's he's made some mistakes and he's another person, again, that's a bit flawed. The great thing about Scott Lang is also the fact that 
he's not like a god of thunder or a super soldier or a billionaire philanthropist playboy genius genius you know he is of all of our heroes, probably your most average guy. Welcome to Baston Robbins. Would you like to try our mango fruit blast? And he even plays on that a little bit when he finally gets to meet some of these characters and he's a little bit starstruck yeah. in the same way that, you know, Agent Coulson was. Captain America. Mr. Lang. <laughs> it's an honor. I'm shaking your hand too long. Wow, this is awesome. Captain America, I know you too. You're great. So he really brings us normal people into this world and gives us a set of eyes and ears and a little hope that, you know, maybe we could be a hero. Next up is number six, Rockets. Oh, yeah. There is just so much I can say about Rocket that I could probably make a movie dedicated just to him. <laughs> he has heart. He has spunk. He's a fierce fighter. He's a true leader. And really, he, to us, was the heart and soul of the Guardians of the Galaxy. All of the individual characters had their strengths, but Rocket seems to be the one that encompassed a little bit of everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, he fights as fierce as Drax. He has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder and a shady past like Gamora. He's got the charm of Star-Lord, and he's got the heart of Groot. Now we enter our top five favorite characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And number five is Doctor Stephen Strange. His movie, Doctor Strange, is one of our favorite movies uh, to, to, to watch and rewatch over and over again. Then in Thor Ragnarok, when he shows up, he just completely steals that scene. I kind of want more of that. Like, uh, sorry, Thor, I know this is your movie, but I, I want more, more Doctor Strange. And it just continues in Infinity War. He gives, he gives it right back to Tony yeah. Stark, when Tony Stark starts being that, you know, sarcastic. They are two of a kind, yeah. and to see them go head to head is so, so delicious. I mean, we don't get enough of it. I definitely want more of that, because it's it's hard to, I think, have as big of an ego as Tony Stark until you find Doctor Strange. <laughs> and you finally go, oh, no, he's, oh, I don't know, I don't know who's got the bigger ego, because they're both pretty, pretty egotistical, but yeah. they're also good people still, and that, Ego somehow becomes part of their charm. Also, he has a really cool cloak, and he's a very he's got a very good relationship with his cloak, which also yes. speaks highly of him. <laughs> Next up is number four, Loki. I have been falling for 30 minutes! So Loki's not a villain, but he's not a hero. He's an anti-hero. He mm. is one of our misguided yet lovable favorites. Loki's dynamic with Thor is so interesting in the first Thor movie. Uh, and then he becomes so easy to hate in the first Avengers that it's hard to imagine he'll ever redeem himself. And yet somehow he does. Somehow mm. he wins over the audience so that we not only start to stop hating him, we start liking him. Yeah. We start cheering Loving for him. him. Yeah. We start wanting more of him. And ultimately him being one of the favorites that comes on screen, we're like, oh yes. And some of the best moments are when Loki is impersonating other characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I love it when he impersonates Odin. It was indeed hilarious. <laughs> I love it when he does Captain America. <laughs> it's much better. Whoa. The costume's a bit much. It's so tight. But the confidence. I can feel the righteousness surging. Hey, you want to have a rousing discussion about truth, honor, patriotism? God bless them. Number three on our list is Tony Stark, Iron Man. The man who started it all. He started it all, and uh, you know that's reason enough to have him in our top 10 and our top five. The father of the, the MCU. Um, someone that if Robert Downey Jr. Uh, plays Tony Stark so perfectly, and it's just such perfect casting, and uh, he's someone that, you know, he basically put that entire kind of franchise on his back, and the, the, put the, the entire you know Marvel Cinematic Universe on his back, really. It was his charisma in that first Iron Man, uh, his wit and his charm, and you know, but he had a, a redemptive story in that one. Um, he's someone that makes a, a, the ultimate sacrifice. And, and I am Iron Man. Iron Man has basically become the face of Marvel, and that wasn't always the case. You know, it was like Spider Man basically was was the face of Marvel, and you know, the X Men, Fantastic Four. You saw a lot of other movies that that came out. You know, a lot of franchises. There's a reason that Iron Man wasn't like the first 
uh, Marvel movie picked up from studios when Marvel sold off all the rights. You know, it's just they didn't think they could make a, a movie out of Iron Man, that there would be, like, much of an audience. Number two is Captain America, also known as Steve Rogers. For this character to be not only in our top ten, but our number two slot is such a huge bravo applause to Chris Evans. Captain America is a character who I can't imagine would be very easy to portray. He is such a good boy. <laughs> um, and yet we still have to like him mm -hmm. and we still have to be able to relate to him and find the human quality in him despite the fact that he would arguably never step a toe out of line. Yeah. I don't mean to make things difficult. I know because you're a very polite person. If I see a situation pointed south, I can't ignore it. Sometimes I wish I could. No, you don't. No, I don't. So the fact that Chris Evans is able to make him believable, relatable, likable, and really show us his heart from the very first film onwards, mm -hmm. I think that is what hooks us, is the fact that Captain America does wear his heart on his sleeve. You always know where you stand with Steve Rogers. You always know how he feels about a given situation. He doesn't play politics. He doesn't play games. He is a soldier. He's going to do the right thing, and that's that. Steve Rogers just is so connected to all the characters that we kind of love in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. His frenemy relationship with Tony Stark and, you know, they're button heads and they both are trying to do what they feel is right and, you know, but they're not, and they're not willing to compromise on that. Uh, and his relationship with Sam Wilson um, and, you know, the friendship that we've, that we have with that. His loyalty to Bucky, you know, always knowing that there's a real, you know, his friend is in there. His friend is just being brainwashed and he's going to do whatever it takes to help his, to help his friend out. And uh, also, his relationship with our number one character in our most favorite MCU uh, character list is Black Widow. Did I step on your moment? Their whole dynamic in Captain America the Winter Soldier um, is great because they both grow so much in that movie. With Natasha Romanoff, I mean, we've hammered it already, the fact that we love flawed characters. She's 100% flawed. She is... Uh, she's done some dark deeds, she's been on the wrong side, she is haunted by those memories, mm -hmm. but she's also constantly and always trying to do the right thing going forward and to put things right, not in a chip on her shoulder, prove herself sort of way, but just in a, I know what I need to do and I'm gonna get it done. If you're about to tell me to look on the bright side, um. I'm about to hit you in the head with a peanut butter sandwich. She stands up for other women. As will you. She's not alone. She stands up for her other teammates. She stands up for herself. She stands up for Hawkeye and shows extreme loyalty. The people who make it past her teammate status and into her real inner circle of family, mm -hmm. there's nothing she wouldn't do for them, including make the ultimate sacrifice. She's the reason that Iron Man 2 is even watchable in any sense of the word. Uh, she is. She was great in Iron Man 2 in her intro. Um, she's, you know, she was amazing in that and made the movie actually uh, somewhat enjoyable. Uh, <laughs> all right, so now you've seen all of our favorite characters, our 100 favorite characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you haven't seen all of them, then go ahead and check out the other videos uh, on there. We have, you know, we do it in installments of 10. Uh, and let us know what you think about, about about these characters. If you think that you know, let us know what your top ten is down in the comments below. We'd love to love to hear from you. And we respond to all comments. And also check us out on Instagram at NotDefinitive and on Twitter at DefinitiveNot. So those are our top ten favorite characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But they are definitely not definitive. <laughs>